dear friends to welcome to this edition of vbs osteo med a series of osteology videos on youtube the topic of uh, today's discussion is interior of the cranial cavity part 1 the anterior cranial floor when you open the cranial cavity for the first time this is the first impression or anticipation that you are indeed going to see a treasure yes indeed brain is a, is a, is a great treasure and understanding it is 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 a real tough job but then when you actually open it you don't see a treasure box rather you see a box like this therefore it defies your first imagination that it's it's all you know a yeah, yeah, treasure chest rather it it's uh, seems to be a little more organized into a few compartments something like a, a, a chocolate box or a sweet box but then when you look at the floor we anticipate that the uh, cranial cavity has a lot of communication with the rest of the head we particularly think there could be a lot of gaps or windows in the floor may not be of the windows that you see in a building like this but certainly you can see on the photograph there foramen foramina of various shapes we will go into it in detail in your course now we start the discussion from here the two flashing lines blue and white flashing lines there are two in this photograph which roughly demarcates the cranial floor into three areas or zones respectively anterior middle and posterior remember we had the same classification in the base of skull also exterior of the skull skull base same pattern we can consider here also anterior frontal region middle sphenoid temporal region and posterior occipital region now the area highlighted by the box in the small photograph has been blown up for a detailed view or a magnified view notice the following this area is the anterior cranial floor floor of the anterior cranial floor we see the following bones shown in a quadrangular area in blue and white dotted line is the ethmoid bone on either sides of the ethmoid bone is the orbital plate of the frontal bone behind the ethmoid bone shown by a flashing arrow is the sphenoid bone these are the three bones that contribute to the anterior cranial floor next a few details to the extent identifiable here right in the sagittal plane the ethmoid shows a projection upwards into the cranial cavity that's called the crista galli you will see in a later photograph the fax cerebri is attached to the crista galli next on either sides of the crista galli the crista galli is a vertical structure but the one i am now discussing as shown by the flashing arrows are two horizontal plates of bone highly perforated and called the cribriform plates 
Now, the perforation is for the olfactory nerves to uh, move from the nasal cavity into the cranial cavity where they join the olfactory bulb. Next, right in front of the crusta galli, there is a sagittal ridge of bone running along and upwards along the squamous part of the frontal bone. That's called the frontal crest. But exactly at the junction of the frontal crest and the crusta galli is a opening called the foramen cecum. Next, you can see an irregular line that's beginning to flash there. That line is basically a suture that demarcates the orbital plate of the frontal bone anteriorly from the sphenoid bone posteriorly. The area behind the ethmoid, that is the area in an either side of the midline, is uh, uh, the jugum sphenoidal, is the jugum sphenoidal. And the area on either sides of the jugum sphenoidal is the lesser wing of sphenoid. Next, we will we'll try to identify a few more details. The lesser wing of sphenoid, the posterior border is a demarcation between the anterior and the middle cranial fossa. There is a flashing arrow concentrate on that. That is the optic canal through which the optic nerve communicates with the orbital cavity. Next, connecting the two optic canals, there is a sulcus called the prechiasmatic sulcus. The anterior edge of this sulcus, prechiasmatic sulcus, is known as the limbus of the sphenoid bone. Right behind the sulcus lies the optic chiasma. Optic chiasma is the junction where the two optic nerves mix in the midline. Next, a few more points that's identifiable. The anterior clinoid process is nothing but a posterior bony extension of the lesser wing of the sphenoid. Next, when you trace its roots, it has two roots. One root is continuous with the rest of the uh, lesser wing of the sphenoid, whereas the other root goes down and separates the optic canal from the superior orbital fissure. That means right below the superior orbit, right below the optic um, canal is the superior orbital fissure. And the plate of bone that separates the two is known as the optic strut. And that is shown here by a flashing arrow. A lot of structures passing through the superior orbital fissure. We will discuss it in uh, the next uh, video, part two of uh, the cranial cavity, where we will cover the middle cranial fossa. Now, that was a brief overview of the bony floor of the anterior cranial fossa. Now, we look at a, a actual dissection where the brain has been removed from the cranial cavity. The dural flaps have been turned uh, at the edges and you can see the flashing arrow there, that's the fax cerebri attached to the crusta galli. On either sides of this is the orbital plate of the frontal bone. More posteriorly, you can see the optic nerve in the optic canal and a little post-lateral to it, you can see the cut end of the internal carotid artery. From here, it goes into the uh, brain and this area, this has been cut here. The cut end of the internal carotid artery is visible here. You can also, as I mentioned, the orbital flight of the frontal bone is seen. On either sides of the fax cerebri, the cribriform plate is visible. Further behind it is the jugum sphenoidal and the sharp edge of the lesser wing of the sphenoid is also clearly seen in this photograph. Now, 
The flap that has been reflected is the dura mater. It's been reflected off the edge of the um, uh, cut bone. The cribriform plate can be seen on either sides of the fax cerebri. The crista galli is not visible because the fax is attached to it. Just for identification, although it doesn't belong to this fossa, you can see the centrally located pituitary fossa on a more posterior plane. We will discuss that in more detail in the middle cranial fossa discussion. A contextual MRI horizontal section, uh, we can identify a few structures. Marked in white is the lesser wing of the sphenoid. It's a sharp posterior margin is very clearly seen separating the anterior cranial fossa from the posterior cranial fossa demarcating the two fossae. Also seen is the posterior extension of the lesser wing of the sphenoid. There are two bony projections down probably they may be the um, strut and the uh, other root of the less, uh, lesser wing of the sphenoid but very clearly the anterior clinoid process is shown in the circle and more centrally the pituitary fossa is also visible that was that was a uh, contextual uh, horizontal section uh, an mri of the head region further the frontal bone orbital plate of the frontal bone is seen and more in the midline a small bit of the ethmoid bone is also a visible possibly that's the area where the crusta galli is emerging upwards now that was a short discussion on the anterior cranial floor or the floor of the anterior cranial fossa i would request you to give your feedback to this email id or better still you can write your feedback in the blog area below the YouTube video. This was a presentation from the Department of Anatomy, St. John's Medical College, Bangalore, India. A similar set of videos is also available on YouTube in the channel VBS Histo Med. Uh, it is accessible free access members, students, and faculty who would like to make use of it, you are welcome to do so. You can subscribe to this channel and also press the bell button so that as and when more videos are added, you will be notified. This is a set of about 90 plus histology videos useful for students of medical, dental, nursing, physiotherapy, and allied science courses across the world. Thank you for your patient hearing.